Hello everyone, this is Spring Porter with Spring Solutions LLC. In this video, I thought I'd discuss, um, do something a little bit different and just discuss um, what it was like to be a paralegal for anyone who is out there um, who is now trying to work from home because we're all kind of in quarantine and on lockdown. The need for virtual paralegals is, um, I mean, is prevalent now, um, more so than it was when I was a paralegal. I've been a paralegal for about 10 years on and off um, in Maryland and in the state of Georgia. So I just thought I'd put this PowerPoint together so that you could just see kind of from someone who's been there kind of what to expect or what my experience was. So if you're interested, stay tuned. So um, we all kind of have our own, I guess, definition of what we think a paralegal does or is or what they do specifically. But this is just kind of a, um, a pretty good definition. Uh, I usually would not quote Wikipedia, but this is just a basic, it's very detailed. Um, so I thought I'd read that. A paralegal is an individual who employed, who is employed or retained by a lawyer, a law office, a corporation, a governmental agency, or other entity, and who performs specifically delegated substantive legal work for which a lawyer is responsible. Paralegals perform tasks required knowledge of the law and legal procedures. The exact nature of their work and limitations that the law place on the tasks they are allowed to undertake vary between nations and jurisdictions. A paralegal is not a lawyer, but is typically employed by a law office or an internal legal department of a company. So um, kind of another way to, to, to uh, look at it, this is a pretty good definition, but um, if you were to think of kind of like a dental hygienist uh, or a nurse and how they prep the doctors for surgery or for like an abstraction of a tooth or the filling in of um, um, you know a cavity uh, they do all the pretty much the dirty work for them uh, prepping and cleaning and doing all of that type of thing and that's similar to what a paralegal does for attorneys um, we may initiate contacts or call uh, clients that maybe the attorney doesn't want to deal with at that moment we put together the files for them. Uh, we do all of the, the how-to and the case management of it all, physical case management of putting files together for them and the research. Um, so that's one way to look at it. Um, what qualifications do you need to become a paralegal? This is sort of state specific. And um, what you need in Georgia may not be what you need in Maryland. And it really just depends on the company. So it's also not only is it also state specific, it's company specific. If you're dealing with like kind of like a mom and pop type of law firm, that's I started in a really small law firm in uh, Georgia where I was kind of like the office manager and I was the receptionist and I was the bankruptcy preparer. I was kind of everything. I was taking money. I was accounts receivable, accounts payable. And I had so many hats. Um, and I was also in the paralegal program. So I, although I had um, a bachelor's degree, I didn't have actual legal experience up until that point. So it really is just specific. And some you do need, they require a paralegal certificate. I think if you're in the program, it's probably easier to get a position um, if you're just starting out rather than, you know, someone who may not have it. Um, experience, uh, like any other profession, it may trump education. So if you have, you know, a lot of experience um, in areas of law um, and you really know what you're doing, but yet you may not have that paralegal certificate, I mean, that they may take that into consideration. And again, it really just depends on the company that you're looking for. So what is the pay? So this salary um, information I got, again, from Wikipedia, which is not a site that I usually, a source that I usually use to cite information, but this is just blanket information. Um, and as it pertains to salary, uh, I don't think one for 2020 has come out yet. Um, this is from 2012. And it just says that the median annual salary for a paralegal is about $59,000. So just, a, you know, around 60000 Paralegals work uh, for the U.S. federal government. So they average, obviously, more. It's around 65000 a year. In state and local government paralegals, they earn less. So um, government agencies tend to pay more 
Um, I know I'm in the DMV area, as I've stated in previous videos, there's a lot of um, federal agencies here, or in, even in DC, you would probably be making um, between 65 and sometimes even higher than that, maybe 75. So um, if there is a range. In Georgia, I was making well less than 59,000. But again, that's the South. The pay grade there is lower because the cost of living is lower. So what areas of law can you be a paralegal in? And essentially, it's wherever attorneys are. Wherever there is an attorney, there is a need for a paralegal. Um, in the medical profession, uh, criminal cases, murder trials, um, civil cases, banking institutions. I was a, um, my title wasn't paralegal, but I was a bankruptcy specialist in a credit union. So that was a, inside the collections department, but I handled the bankruptcy cases there. Um, essentially doing the same work, but just for managers as opposed to attorneys, but still the same work. Um, armed forces. Again, I'm in Maryland. It's close to Annapolis. It's close to D.C. And there are a lot of government agencies. There's armed forces. There's military bases here that, um, you know, that need paralegals to assist them. Um, personal injury cases, liability, products liability, bankruptcy, collections, business and corporations. It's endless. Um, apparently, essentially wherever there are, are attorneys, there's usually a need for an assistant, a paralegal of some sort to help them with the paperwork. Uh, what kind of specific tasks does a paralegal do? So research, draft pleadings, these are some of the things that I've done um, in the attorney's office that, that I worked for. Uh, you are sort of the middleman or the liaison between the courts, the clients, and the attorneys. You could be scheduling mediation, scheduling court hearings, um, keeping the attorney's calendar clear, um, scheduling pre-court appointments for the clients before they go to court and they're, they're nervous and they want to know what it is that's going on. You kind of have, you know, to make sure your calendar is up and you ha have to meet all the deadlines that come along with it, that come along with the pleadings that have been filed. Um, you have to keep charge of the mail for in most cases for your particular case. A lot of it now is electronic, so you may get a lot of emails that have deadlines on them, that have, you know, updates to your file. I mean, there's a lot. Um, another thing that you could do, uh, but yeah, I said keep an attorney's calendar. You set up court dates. You may also take payments. As I mentioned, when I was kind of like an intern, I'm not yet a paralegal, but still in some smaller law firms, the paralegal may take payments. You may have to work out payment arrangements and do sort of collection work for um, some of the attorneys, for even, you know, former clients. Um, it's endless. You are a counselor. You are many things. You wear many different hats, depending on the environment of the law firm or company that you're with. Uh, you file documents. Again, most of it, everything has gone to e-filing. There are still some smaller districts and counties where they like paper, and you have to mail things to the clerk still. Most of it is electronic filing. And deal, again, dealing with the mailings, as I mentioned. Case management is a big thing. That's what you're doing mostly, putting files together. You may open files, um, put in, you know, their database, the client information, and then, you know, make sure you, sometimes you may have to run reports from those case management software so that you can kind of keep hold of, um, you know, what has been missed and what you need to work on type thing. Um, office management, um, that's something that you could do. You could be a paralegal in a smaller law firm and you could be handling um, payroll or, you know, like HR type things. It just really depends on the environment that you want to be in. Do you want to work uh, with a smaller group of people? You would wear more hats or work for a bigger corporation where there are different departments and you're sort of just doing, you know, one or you know, less, fewer ta tasks as opposed to wearing so many hats. It just depends on the type of person that you are and what you like to do. Counts payable. So things I liked about being a paralegal, and again, I was a paralegal for about 10 years in the areas of bankruptcy, regular civil litigation, and um, collections, and family law. And what I liked about it is helping people in their time of need. 
I remember um, probably the most emotionally challenging position was when I worked for a family law firm. I mean, you're dealing with people that are going through a tough time. I mean, they were going through a divorce. And I remember a few occasions I had to sort of hand over a box of tissues because people just need a release. It's a stressful time. Some of them have never gone through it. Some of them did, and they have kids, and it's just a tough time, and you're, you're having to be a counselor. And I liked when those cases were closed, and you, you could see that the people changed. They were so happy. It's like you get to see a transformation, kind of. Um, that is rewarding. Um, the thing, Another thing I liked about being a paralegal is you have a special skill set that most people are not going to know. Um, skill set, you know, with pertaining to the laws, and then just how to deal with people, how to talk to people, um, how to really be a better communicator. Because you're, you're having to be, again, a liaison between so many different sectors, the courts and the attorneys and then the clients. And then the attorneys, at least the ones that I've worked with, they kind of want the facts. They want you to kind of present them with information and just state it what it is and how you came to that conclusion and why you did something that you did. So it makes you become a better communicator and that you kind of take away all of the other fluff, so to speak, and you just kind of lay it all out. You, you know how to present an argument, essentially. Um, and it makes you for a better communicator in some instances. I mean, on the back end, you kind of get free legal advice. Uh, especially if you're working for, let's say, like a DUI attorney or products liability. You get to learn about things, again, a specialized skill that most people may not know about unless they have a case in that situation. Um, so, Or you could ask a hypothetical question to an attorney and uh, just for learning purposes, but it could be your own particular situation, and you could get advice on that. So... Um, you know, that's good to have. Things I disliked about being a paralegal, it's stressful. But depending on what type of law firm you have, it is very stressful. Um, individuals, again, who are going through divorce or maybe even bankruptcy, I mean, it's devastating to them to have to go through these types of things. And you have to be calm in that instance um, or be good at, you know, releasing stress. Um, across the board, the attorneys that I worked with at different law firms in different states, both Maryland and Georgia, a lot of them really did have poor case management. And I'm not discussing like the software, like they had software to manage the cases, but they didn't actually utilize that to the best of their ability. Like paralegals will put a file together and they will assist it. But not some cases linger on, some cases get dismissed, some get reopened. Like there are different nuances to cases in kind of every stage on what's going on. And across the board, I just feel like a lot of cases kind of fell through the cracks um, because no one kind of followed up on all of them. Like I'm sure if there was a report ran, um, there would have been a, a lot of them that could have been closed or maybe one just needed a letter or just something else could have, you know, um, been sent out so that everybody in the firm was kind of on the same page or everybody maybe on a specific team was on the same page. And especially working as a bankruptcy specialist in a credit union, the attorneys that we used there had really poor case management. There were cases that were open, collection cases that were open for years and like nobody touched them. So yeah, that makes it stressful. And sometimes you would probably more often than I care to admit, I was put in a position between the lawyer and the client that everybody has maybe like a problem case or, or maybe a needy client and the attorney sometimes didn't have time to deal with them. So it would kind of be handed off to um, you know, a legal assistant or paralegal to kind of deal with that issue when you all sometimes didn't have all the answers. So that that is frustrating to kind of be in the middle and not have what you need to get your job done. Management styles. Attorneys are kind of notorious for not being the easiest people to work with. And not to sound sexist, but the women attorneys that I worked with are typically um, not as like I didn't have to babysit them for lack of a better word they were on target they knew a very 
you know, organized and they knew what they needed to do, but setting deadlines and kind of um, voicing their opinion on what needed to be done. The male attorneys, I felt like I was babysitting a little bit more, um, you know, with maybe getting their time in or following up on deadlines when, you know, things should have been done. I felt like I was a little bit more of a babysitter and working for male attorneys, which was, I mean, it's interesting. Um, so those are the things that I, I didn't like about being a paralegal um, that ultimately led me to becoming a, a funds locator. Um, ironically, in a, the bankruptcy sector is what I've been doing. If you've been following my channel and listening to my videos, I've decided to kind of step away from being a paralegal, at least at the moment. This is something I could always do at my leisure virtually. Like I don't need to go into a law office to do that now. All this stuff can be done. Um, virtually if I ever feel the need like I needed more money or you know I needed to kind of um, supplement what I'm doing because I just started a business and it takes time to build it but that is the reason why um, I decided to stop for, for all of these reasons just the management style is your stress level and just feeling like you know when you have a family you need to be close to your kids so you're not missing time out on your family um, having a, a better work-life balance and working from home and sort of setting my own schedule is something that I, I mean, it's priceless. Um, the money will come, uh, you know, because I'm working on building that. So if anyone out there who is interested in being a paralegal and who are basically good at handling stress, you're really organized, you don't mind, you know, the hard to diff or difficult management styles, um, then try maybe try being a paralegal again you can do it virtually now um you can take paralegal classes online um you could look for you know virtual paralegal assistance maybe in your state or abroad you know in different states and nationwide and maybe try to see you know how you like it maybe get on uh, maybe a contract type deal where they're just working on a special project um to see if that is a good fit for you so I hope this video was helpful for anyone who's interested in becoming a paralegal or wondering what it's like. I will see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.